Good morning, Word of Life Church and all of our YouTube friends and family. And it's just exciting to have a moment here to get back into the Word of God. And I wonder how everyone's doing. Is everyone staying strong in this? You know, one of the things that's been on my heart lately is that you need to remember that the battle is the Lord's. That at the end of the day, when situations come up that seem to seem to want to block us or stop us or even call it, cause us to stumble, I want you to remember that the battle is the Lord's. And so in the end, we win. And you need to count on that because that's something that is going to carry you. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, I want to just look at a couple of scriptures here. We've actually talked about Jehoshaphat before. He, he kind of, I, I marvel because in this instance, there was three armies coming at him. And at that point, he had choices to make when there were armies and destruction and stuff coming at him to cause him to stumble. But I want you to notice three armies were coming at Jehoshaphat. That's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And uh, he spoke to his people. And uh, in verse 3 it says, And Jehoshaphat was fearful and set himself to seek the Lord. Now I, I mentioned that probably a month ago. Uh, when fearful situations come in, what moves you? You know, the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, but God has got a, a destiny and a plan for you. But fear can at times come in and it can stop you. We know that in the wild that fear will stop animals that are about to be preyed upon by another animal. Fear will paralyze or cripple. But I want you to notice in this situation here, fear caused him to press in and to seek more of God. Because I think at the end of the day, when we go through times of, uh, of trouble or, triumph, or trials, sorry, um, we've got an opportunity to be fearful and crippled and, if you would, paralyzed or fearful to seek the Lord. Begin to press into Him. You know, the Bible says that uh, over in uh, Psalm 119, it's uh, verse 164, it says, Seven times a day I will praise you because of your righteous judgments. And those who love your law have great peace. Peace is something that in the midst of fear can cause you to go through any storm. You know, it's one thing uh, I remember I have, uh, we've sold our boat, but we bought a, a boat, it was a 30 foot boat, and we thought we were going to kind of use it as a floating cottage. And so I remember being out on the bay a year ago, and uh, the person that was with me was sort of a seasoned captain. And I remember when we were going, the wind had kind of uh, blown up a little bit the waves were definitely uh larger than i was used to and he said don't worry he said this is uh this boat can well handle this storm and this situation and so there was great peace knowing number one that a seasoned captain knew what he was doing but we were also in a vessel that was able to carry us through that story just i remember you know being relieved once we got back to shore but I know that while the storm was raging, I still had great peace. I still knew that we were going to get from point A to point B, even though there was wind and waves and circumstance, we were going to get there because the boat could handle it. And so look at what we just read a moment ago in, the, in, in, uh, in Psalms. It says, I will praise you, God, because of your righteousness, and those who love your law will have great peace. The law is talking about the word of God. What settles you? What, what in your storm, in your boat, in your situation, settles you? Do you really believe that the battle is the Lord's? That's what the scriptures talk about. Whenever Jesus was moved with compassion, we talked about that last week in the feeding of the 5,000, that when there was a problem that came, they pressed in to see, what Jesus, what would you have us do? When you run into a problem, do you run to the problem without Jesus, or do you press into Jesus and say, Lord, what would you have us do? And a quick recap of last week, he took the little, those loaves and fishes, they broke it, they blessed it, and they gave it. And that became much. And so you see in a situation here that when you begin to praise God and when you begin to give your situation, your storm, suddenly you're going to realize that your boat is a storm weathering boat you're going to realize that your god is a storm weathering god you're going to recognize it says here that those who love the law those who love the word will have great peace if you ever ran into somebody that had great peace it's pretty amazing when they know that everything is going to be okay sometimes i challenge you that we need to slow down and as we listen to the lord 
you can sense it in your heart that everything is going to be okay. You can sense it in the heart in your heart that the battle is the Lord's. You can sense it in your heart that God's got you. And so we see here in verse 3 it says Jehoshaphat was fearful and set himself to seek the Lord. These times of trouble or or, or troubling situations sometimes cause people to walk away from God or they walk away from prayer or they walk away from the Bible. They can be so busy trying to make sure that they're safe that they're not listening to the captain. What if when I was on my boat, I wasn't listening to the captain? My friend was the captain. What if when he said, we're going to be fine, this boat was designed for this? What if I didn't believe that and I started putting my life jacket on, I was going to, you know, find a, 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 little, a little boat to throw overboard and I'm going to sit in that because that's going to be my lifeboat. I wouldn't have necessarily got to my destination. I needed to stay in the boat. I needed to stay with the captain. God needs you to stay with him right now. There are opportunities for you to walk away. There are opportunities for you to find nine reasons to say, I've got to be so busy preparing for the what ifs that I don't have that peace, that I don't let God be the captain of my soul. I don't let God be the captain of my ship. So we see Jehoshaphat, that fear pressed him into pressing into God. And so they sought the Lord. He called for a fast throughout Judah, and they were all assembled together to seek the Lord. And they were assembled together to obtain aid from the Lord. You know, and I don't want this to sound hard, but God actually said, you have not because you ask not. That's why he said, call unto me all ye who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So that's a bit of a mind twister here because you're going to say, but God saw that we were laboring. God saw that we were hungry. God saw that we had a need. But think back to last week when the disciples came to Jesus and said the crowd is hungry. They spoke that Jesus knew that. And yet they asked him, Lord, what do we do? And God put it back to them and said, you give them something to eat. When God says, come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God knows that you need rest. But then God also said, come unto me. So that's where prayer comes in. And, you know, and again, I mentioned it just a moment ago. You have not because you ask not. Are there things that God is asking you to do? Maybe God's asking you to take time each day and press in and pray. Seek his face and, and, and just love on him. But we're so busy worried about the boat not getting across the bay that we're not listening to the captain. Right? What if I was running around the boat trying to do my thing, trying to fix it my way, and the captain just wanted me to sit beside him and listen to him? And that's actually exactly what happened. I sat beside him and I listened to him. And he told me how we were going to weather the storm. He told me how we were going to press through. God wants to show you how you are going to weather your storm. And so we saw here that Jehoshaphat, they pressed in and they, they came before the Lord to obtain aid from God. Skip down to verse 8. And they started to look at what was going on. And... Uh, they started to remember how God had rescued in the past, how God had saved people in the past. And it says, and they dwelt in the land and built. So that's talking about God's people dwelling in the land and building homes and really coming out of their fearful situation. But they came upon, in verse 9, it says, but they said, if disaster comes upon us, if sword or judgment or pestilence or famine we will stand before this temple and before you because your name is in this temple and we will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear and deliver. So think of the scripture that says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. We've heard that talked about for years in the church. These guys here are talking about pestilence coming along, disaster coming along, troublesome times coming along. They've built, they've dwelt, they've lived in the land. But it said here, we will cry out in our distress, and you will hear, and you will deliver. So think about this for just a second. God, we will cry out to you, and you will hear, and you will deliver. See, we don't like the crying out part, because we just want God to just hear and deliver. Sorry, to just deliver. But why this is designed that way, I don't know. But God's asking us to pray. God's asking us to press in and seek his face. That's why he said, come unto me, all ye who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So God sees that you're laboring. God sees that you're in, in maybe some difficult situations. But he says, call unto me. That's actually how we got saved, right? 
call upon in the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. So there needs to be an action. The Bible also says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Or confession is made unto salvation. So think about how you got born again, how you got made new. That was you recognizing that you were in a troublesome situation. Your boat was in the middle of the bay. The waves were probably going to sink your ship in a, in a real hurry. And you called upon the name of the Lord. And the word says you were saved. When you call upon him, when you recognize that Jesus died for you, when you recognize that he paid for your sin, huge price. When you confess your sin, the word says he is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. So take that same opportunity, if you would, that when you receive Christ, according to this scripture here, that fear drove them into the presence of God. They began to praise him. They began to remember how God had delivered them. You know, when we talked about my favorite scripture about the battle at Ziglag, how David encouraged himself in the Lord, when the trouble was all around him, when the rocks were ready to be thrown, when they were ready to just literally beat this guy up, he said the, that he encouraged himself in the Lord. He started to to build himself up by saying, God, I know that you're a good God. I know that you said, call unto me. I know that you will answer me. I know that this fearful situation, you will deliver me. Then the one thing that we I, I didn't talk about when I actually preached that little sermon was that he encouraged himself in the, in the Lord. And in the end, you know what God said to him? You will pursue and you will recover all. Notice here, it says, you'll cry out to me in your distress and, and, and you will hear and deliver us, O God. So when you call unto the Lord, you're going to be saved. When you call unto the Lord, you're going to be rescued. When you call unto the Lord, you're going to be delivered because God hears you. Then, uh, skipping down to verse 13, I, it's a lot to read and it's really hard listening to somebody read at times. So verse 13, it says, Now Judah was standing before the Lord, even their infants, wives, and children. Got the whole family involved in believing God, listening to God praying to God, thanking the Lord. And it said, And in the midst of the assembly, the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, and the son of another guy. And it says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. Move down a little farther here, verse 15. Halfway through the verse it says, And the Lord says to you, Do not fear or be dismayed because of this great army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. So the kids, the wife, the family, the workers, everybody got involved in seeking God. They were fearful. They were in the middle of their bay. They wondered if their ship was going to sink. But the captain had a word for them and said, you have called unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great things. And he said here, do not fear nor be dismayed because the, this great army of the Lord, the battle is, is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but God's. So maybe you say, Pastor, how do I, how do I make that work in my life? How do I get my mind to, to, to rest? How do I get my heart to be calm? How do I know my boat's going to make it across the bay? First of all, when you seek the face of the Lord, you start to develop an immense trust in Him. When you really, you know, it, it's funny, the word says to uh, strive to enter into his rest. And if you think about that, work really hard to get into the rest of God. So when you're resting in the Lord, you know that safely you're going to get back to port. You know that the captain driving the boat knows just when to put the trim down, knows just when to move those throttles forward, knows just when to back off. And you sit beside him and you observe but he is the one taking you to the safe place. And so we saw there, remember, uh, over in Psalm 119, it says, those who love your law will have great peace. Peace is something that the world tries to find every day. But if you're not putting God first, if you're not allowing the Lord to be the captain of your ship, the key is above in the scripture. Seven times a day I will praise you because of your righteous judgment. Seven times a day, I will praise you. How do you praise? What, what, what does praise mean? Praise means that you're thanking God. You know God's moving. You know God is working on your behalf. Praise could be simply, remember Jehoshaphat, one of the things they started to do was to think about some of the victories. 
Think about the last time God rescued you. Think about the last time you go out into that storm and, and, and there was a weapon formed and there was something trying to sink your ship. And the last time, and you could say, you know what? God gave me great peace on the inside. That's what builds peace in your heart. Something that you can count on the Lord. Jeremiah 33, um, it says, verse 2, it says, Thus saith the Lord God, maker of earth, and the Lord who formed you to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel concerning the houses of this city and concerning all the kings of Judah which are thrown down to make defense. I want you to notice there, call to me and I will answer you. God is a prayer answering God. God is a people answering God. God is a situation answering God. God is a storm answering God. And it says, God is the maker of heaven and earth. He formed you to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Show you things that you don't know. So isn't that interesting? When I was in that boat, there were things I didn't know. I didn't, you know, there's things you learn how to pilot through the, through the, uh, there's the red beacons and there's the green beacons and there's the big white one out there. But when I finally found that rest with that captain, I had called unto him. I had said, please show me how to cap, uh, if you would, find the right path to get home. When you call upon the name of the Lord, he will answer you. And notice he said, I will show you great and mighty things. Then, going back to Chronicles for just a second, um, one of the things as they started to pay attention to the Lord, uh, in verse 15 it said, he said, Pay attention all Judah and those dwelling in Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. For thus saith the Lord, do not fear or be dismayed. For uh, don't be afraid of this great army, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. So fear and dismay is something that will come every day. So these people, the families were pressing in. They were praising God. Think about, uh, um, you know, the, the, in this situation here, when they were coming before the Lord, uh, they were wanting answers. They had three armies coming at them. They were fearful. They were worried about how they were, not just how you're going to get the ship across the bay, they're worried about how they're going to come out of there without any of them getting skinned alive. They wanted to know that they're going to be okay. And as they pressed into God, God's answer, answer to them was, do not fear nor be dismayed. I mentioned last week that prayer and thanksgiving go hand in hand. That when you come before the Lord with supplications and prayer, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, then... The peace of God that passes understanding. You're not going to understand everything that God asks you to do. You're not going to understand everything that, you know, when God says, I want to give you great peace in the middle of this storm. You're not going to understand that. You're not going to understand why it looks like these circumstances are completely contrary. And what are we ever going to do? But God is asking you one thing is to seek his face. One thing is to press into him. Then he says, call unto me and I will answer you. God will answer you. He is a prayer answering God. He is not ever going to get blamed because he didn't listen to somebody. He's not ever going to get blamed because he didn't answer their prayer. Now, we don't like this part. We might be to blame. Jehoshaphat and his, these families, maybe they, they had decided that there was other things more important, right? More important. Remember Nahum the leper? He thought he was so important. And when, when, and when the man of God came to bring, bring great blessing to him, he thought it should have happened a certain way. You know, he thought he was just supposed to go and dip a couple times in a clean old river and it's just going to be perfect. But when the circumstances shifted and he was asked to go into a dirty old river and, and when the, the man of God didn't actually come to his door, he sent a servant to go. Suddenly, Nam's going, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. It was shaking his thinking. He became angry. He became resentful and it stopped the plan of God. I challenge you today. Don't let circumstances make you angry or resentful. Don't let problems stop you from seeking the face of God. Don't let circumstances when, you know, think about it. When Jesus cursed the fig tree, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. This will maybe be next week's sermon. But when Jesus saw the fig tree and he wanted a fig from it, we all feel sorry for the fig tree because there was no figs. And it said he cursed that fig tree and it began to dry up at its root. Do you know when a tree is dying and it's drying up at its root? The leaves aren't going to show it right away. Where I'm going with this part is this. God is moving on your behalf. 
it's drying up from the roots. You may not see the results today, tomorrow, or the next day. But as you continue to press into God, and remember, the battle is not yours, but God's. You're called to press in, to pray, to thank Him. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. Thank Him for moving you forward. Remember, God always wants to move you forward. Um, then in Jeremiah 33, uh, 3, it says, Call to me and I will answer you. God is not ever going to get blamed for not answering. He says, And I will show you great and mighty things. I will show you great and mighty things. I will show you the way to get across the bay. I will show you the way to captain that boat. Now, the next time I was out on that boat, we had some contrary winds again. We had some waves again. They were, we were kind of hunkering down. But you know what? I learned something from the first captain experience. I learned something from the first experience about how to get from A to B. How to pilot in that storm. And so I was very thankful for that situation. These situations that you're going through right now, whether it's with COVID or you're believing for health or you're believing for a job or whatever it is that you're believing for, use that as something that will push you, if you would, into the presence of God. When we are weak, he is strong. We don't like those circumstances. We don't like those times. But I think those times that can become healthy. Because when you hunker down and listen to the captain, and when you know that you're, he's sitting right beside you, in our case, he lives on the inside of us, but in my case on that boat, he was right beside me. I had peace going through that storm. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. God's desiring to move you forward. God's desiring to show you that the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. The greatest thing you can learn from this whole sermon here today is to release your fear, release your doubt. It's real hard, isn't it, at times? It's easier to look at doubt and look at unbelief and say, I'm just going to accept that. But we've almost got to come to a place where we're going to say, Lord, I'm giving all of my circumstances to you. I'm going to trust you. And then I challenge you to do this. Press in. Take that time every day to come before the Lord and say, Lord, what would you have me do today? What is my loaves and fishes experience today? What is the situation today? Be like Jehoshaphat that got his whole family involved. That's why it's beautiful when you see a family that continues to press in and seek God. Remember, the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. And God wants to move you forward. Let's just pray right now, if you would, to... Um, maybe there's people watching today that says... Pastor, I've missed God so much, He's not going to listen to me ever. You know, I said it earlier, when we're weak, He is strong. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. It says His mercies are new every morning. But you know what? You don't have to wait till tomorrow morning. You could pray right now. Agree with me if you would in prayer. Lord Jesus, I come before you today. First, Lord, I want to repent of all my sin and give you those things that, that separate me from you. I want to be saved. I want to invite Christ to move into my life. I believe he died for me and rose again so that I could have a new life. And Lord, in praying that right now, Lord, maybe we wrestle with our minds in fear. Maybe we wrestle with stepping out in faith. Maybe we wrestle with leaving it up to the captain. Lord, maybe I'm wrestling with just knowing and finding your peace. Maybe I'm wrestling with trying to do it myself. And I give it unto you right now. Your word says to cast the whole of the care over on the Lord. Lord, your word says you care for me watchfully. And I receive that right now. I receive my answer by faith. I give it all to you, Lord, because when we're weak, you're strong. And I call upon your name today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. If you prayed that prayer today, if you invited Christ into your heart or prayed with me, or if you're simply believing God to answer you the prayer in your hour of need, know that He is the captain of your soul. Know that He knows how to get across the bay. He knows how to pilot through that storm. And you are going to be all right. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And I look forward to talking next week. Thank you.